today we're carrying on with the BSDs that we were looking at and we're now looking at Ghost BSD. We're going to do a installation today but we're not going to do what we usually do with a virtual machine. I'm going to install it onto the bare metal with a laptop here and see how we get on with the hardware support etc. So so far in this live session the touchpad's not working so I have plugged in a mouse so we'll be using the mouse for this part. Um, we're going to go for ZFS. Um, one second. So one of these discs is going to be the USB. I'm going to assume, which is unknown device. Let's just go for that. Free BSD UFI button. Yep, that's fine. Password. Real name. Du, du, du. This is quite cool as well. It lets you choose your shell language in the actual installer. Um, by default, here it has fish. Um, I'm going to go for bash, just because that's what I'm used to. Let's keep going. There you go. Um, so I'm going to let that install. I'll pause the video here, and then we'll come back once that's all finished, and we'll see how we get on and see what works and what doesn't. Okay, so we are back. We've installed it to the disk now, and we've just in also installed ScreenFetch just to have a look at what we've got here. So, iOS it registers as FreeBSD. Of course, it's GhostBSD, but it's based upon FreeBSD. Um, Twelve point oh stable. Amount of packages is six hundred and forty five. Resolution. So we got XFCE is the desktop environment. Windows Manager XFWM. Font not identified. Okay, we might have to have a look what's going on with the fonts there. CPU, so it's found CPU, Intel graphics and RAM 16 gig. Right, so as I've said, the only thing that's not working so far that I can tell is the touchpad. Um, mouse is working, so that's fine. The keyboard laptop is working, just just no touchpad support as of yet. So let's have a look around and just sort of, I'm not sure what this is. What is this? Something to do with your input. So, okay, let's mess around with the panel here and get this looking to how I like it. Um, so what is this up here? So you got a whisker menu, bang, 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 verve command line. Is that what that is? No, I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay, so let's remove. Let's see if removing that does what we think it's going to do. Bang, there we go. Brilliant. Um, then what I'm going to do is move the desktop switcher to the right. Let's get that over there. Okay. No, that's all fine, that's all fine. Um, brilliant. So it uses the whisker menu, it's got its own little ghost icon there. What we need to do, it's not got the super key registered to it, so we need to go into the keyboard shortcuts. I always forget what the um, the command is. Is it XFCE4 pop-up window? Pop-up menu? Probably not. No. Tell you what, we'll quickly Google what that is because I'm not going to remember it. Uh, does it have a web browser installed? It does. It has Firefox. So this is, um, it kind of comes with everything out of the box of what you'd need, what you'd expect sort of a package Linux distribution to. Um, so let's just quickly add super key whisker menu shortcut. I just forget what it is. There we go. Pop up whisker menu. We almost got it, guys. We almost got it. So now we need to go back to where we were. And we want to go to where did we do this one here? Oh, so it's already got it there for us. It just doesn't have it. So let's remove this one. And it just doesn't have the hotkey, the um, shortcut. So I go OK. There we go. So now when you press super, your whisker menu will come up so you can go through your applications as such. Um, does it have Plank? What I'm going to do is open up Plank now as well. And there we go. So what I'll do with Plank is make it a bit smaller. We have to go into the compositor because I can see it's got a shadow line there. Let's just go into is it Window Manager Tweaks. So where's the compositor here? There we go. Perfect. So that gets rid of that. There was a sort of a line. And it's, yeah, there we go. So have we got any other themes installed? No, we'll, we'll install some more themes later. So let's 
keep one of them in dock VLC quite like the f icon themes here so let's have a look at what icon themes and theming overall it actually comes with here so let's go on to appearance so it's using Vimix and it's using the vivacious colors dark icons for I think it's a quite a nice fit um, so it also comes with out of the box a few a few here XFCE Vimix light Vimix dark what's Vimix dark look like let's open up our file manager which will be Funar there you go that's pretty nice isn't it and then you're using Funar 1.6.17 so let's just see what else it comes installed with out of the box I'm going to assume you come with your LibreOffice for your sort of documents yeah you've got LibreOffice VLC, Rhythmbox, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, Thunderbird, Transmission and Firefox, Shotwell, okay, uh, what text editor does it come with? Uh, and it comes with the mousepad text editor. So let's just install a few packages now with the terminal. Does it have a software store this one? Software station. Let's have a look. Confirm your password. Nothing's coming up. Hmm, nothing's coming up at all, is it? Let's try that again. There we go. So here's your software station where you can install packages, sort of search for a package you want to install. Um, Let's have a look if GNOME 3 is on there because I want to have a little look at GNOME 3 on GhostBSD as well. So what we're going to do is install GNOME 3 and we're also going to install Chrome GNOME Shell. I do believe it's on this software store. And then we'll have a little look at GNOME on GhostBSD as well as long as that all works the way it should. Oh, we've got a bit of a crash. There we go. And we'll also get Chrome Gnome Shell. And then we'll apply that. And then once that's done, we'll um, we'll come back and we'll log into Gnome as well and see how it all looks with Gnome. Um, so I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll be back in about 10-ish minutes. Okay, so now we are back at a Gnome desktop. Um, and let's see if we manage to install some tweaks. So off camera, I've done a bit of digging and found out that it's going to be quite tricky to install any extensions using the... Um, the GNOME extension website so I do believe you can do it by the terminal so I've tried to install dash to dock by terminal and let's see if it will appear in extensions now there we go so dash to dock so let's enable that one there we go and let's go into the settings here brilliant so let's bring that down um, yeah that looks okay to me and let's move that button to the beginning of the dock brilliant that's all good. Um, I want to have shrink the dash and we want to have it dynamic. So what we should do is customize that to adaptive and then we'll do it to about there. So now when we full screen things it will either disappear or go black. Perfect. So that's sort of the main desktop paradigm I like to follow there. Um, brilliant. So let's just see how much RAM we're using now. Oh, I need to disable that top left let's just open up a terminal at the moment okay let's install htop go into root and pkg install htop yes right so now that i've actually managed to get gnome the way i like it with just the dash to dock and the panel up the top i might actually leave free uh, ghost bsd on this laptop and not reinstall something over it and maybe just partition it and share it with something else um brilliant actually so let's go into htop now so we're using 1.14 um but we've opened a few things so i don't think that's sort of representative of what it would be as we load up so thanks for watching if you've enjoyed the video please subscribe any bsd guys i'm gonna sort of focus on doing sort of incorporating bsd into my sort of repertoire now of videos that i do so 
hopefully there'll be something for everyone thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one